Well, we have been DIY investors since 2020, so just over three years at this point. And today we're gonna to share with you our top lessons learned in that three year period. We have been sharing our journey to financial independence on this channel. If this is your first time here, hi. <laughs> we wanted to talk to you today about DIY investing and the reasons why we have decided to do this ourselves. Going back a few years, it mm -hmm. was not the case. We were with an investment advisor before, like an investment firm, and we decided to take care of, your, of our money. Yeah, more and more people are wanting yeah. that too, right? Mm -hmm. More and more people want to have control of their own finances and not have somebody else yeah. kind of making those decisions for mm -hmm. them. Yeah, so that's what we wanted to discuss with this, the top five reasons that we think it's important and lessons that we have learned along the way. Well, you need to learn all of these terms that you're going to hear in mm -hmm. this DIY investing world. Yeah. There's a lot of acronyms and you kind of need to figure out what they mean um, so you don't get confused or overwhelmed. Yeah, the same way that I have a bunch of different accounts here in Canada, I might have heard of, you know, TFSA, RSP, uh, disposal RSP, margin accounts. There's a lot to learn, mm -hmm. so don't, you know, take a little bit, you know, take your time in trying to understand the different accounts and what are the pros and cons of each account. Yeah, and each one has different tax implications, which yes. is really important, not only mm -hmm. now, but into the future. So you need to mm -hmm. educate yourself on where you're going to be investing your money. Yeah. yeah, and a really good spot to start is, uh, our tip is go to your local library. You don't need to spend money on a lot of no. these books. I mean, if you want to, check out our link of our favorite books that we found quite useful. Yeah. But you can also find many of them at your local library. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. go spend a couple hours, a couple days, just doing your research and figuring out what you want to do to start. Yeah, and that's what we did, right? So we went to the library, we've got a few books that we thought that were interested. We can share the books, you don't even need to make any notes. So go and take a look and if mm -hmm. you decided to, and that's what we did. The ones that we like, we buy because we wanted to keep. Yeah, yeah. And by educating yourself and doing all this research, you're really going to understand your risk um, tolerance. Yeah. And that's going to become very important when you start deciding what you want to invest your money into. And it's really also very important, probably one of the most important things you'll ever do is to define your financial goals. What exactly is it that you're investing for? Is it going to be for your retirement? Are mm -hmm. you investing for your first home? Are you investing for an education, yours or your children? Mm -hmm. These are all very important things. Um, and again, we'll determine where you're investing your money, whether that's into RRSPs, TFSAs, margin accounts, or in Canada, we have a new account for first time home buyers that you can mm -hmm. put money into. All of this is really important. So you need to define what exactly your financial goals are at this point. And those goals will change over the course of your life. But right yeah. now, when you start your journey, what are you saving for? Yeah. And, you know, Take it easy. I'm gonna say that again. <laughs> yeah. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. No, it's a it, lot. I don't know if you're gonna like what I'm gonna tell you, but you're gonna make mistakes. And we keep, I can't say mistakes, it's a learning <laughs> opportunity. She's gonna give me a hard time. It's part of the journey, right? But as long as you know your risk tolerance and how much you're willing to you know, gain or lose. Mm -hmm. So you are learning as you go in. Yeah, and this isn't a single, well, it may be if you are a single individual, then maybe you're doing this journey all on your own. But yeah. if you are in a couple, um, then you have to make sure your partner and you are on the same page. It's mm -hmm. joint money for the most part. And so you've got to kind of make those decisions together. What are your financial goals? What is your risk tolerance? Those are all really important factors to set out clear it write them down so that you keep on track and, and maintain those you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket i think that's the, the saying that's been out there for eons um, but you just want to make sure it kind of like uh i don't know it variety in your meals right you don't want to get bored you want to cover all of your bases for all of your nutritional needs things like that mm -hmm. you want to make sure that your investments are spread out over a bunch of different sectors the past yeah. few years have really demonstrated how some sectors can take off and others mm -hmm. plummet and within a year or two yeah. those switch quite rapidly so if mm -hmm. you're invested 
in a diversified portfolio across all these different allocations and different sectors of the market, mm -hmm. then your portfolio isn't going to see these massive dips and swings. It might still, but it'll help to yes. smooth them out. I'm going to refer again to the video that we talked about before, so investing for beginners, because we do talk about the diversification and why it's important. Yeah, and it's diversification. So we talked just right now about over your investment sectors, but mm -hmm. diversifying your investments could be investing in real estate. It could be investing in stock market. You could be investing in solid like gold and silver and things yeah. like that, right? So again, educate yourself, figure out where you want to be investing your money and then go ahead and diversify your portfolio. I'm going to talk to you about something that happened to us a few, no, last year with COVID. Yeah, well, we made a video about this. <laughs> we made a video about it. I'm going to link them on your screen so you can go and take a look and see how difficult it was for us and how we were feeling about the emotional investing and its downsides, right? It's important for you to consider that you are not alone. If you want to go and talk to us, send us a message, send mm -hmm. us a comment below that we are more than happy to go and connect with you. But why is that important? Well, you don't want to make those emotional decisions, right? Yeah. It's very hard to see your portfolio, or your money, like yeah. tank. And sometimes you can panic. And that's the last thing that you really want to do is let emotion dictate yeah. if you're buying or selling a stock that's where the education piece comes back into this if you have you've done your research and you've chosen the investments that meet your risk tolerance that you believe are sound investments stay with it like don't panic i think that's the biggest thing that yeah. we've learned over the past two years mm -hmm. um, of our emotional roller coaster in investing yeah. is not to panic so don't let those emotions dictate how you invest Sometimes it's difficult for, for you to, us to understand what long terms is, but it is not next year. It's not going to be two years or three years mm -hmm. from now. We are thinking about 10, 15, 20 years. As we are recording this video now in 2023, our long term it goes until the 80s or the 90s. So we, depending on the kind of investment, maybe 100. <laughs> uh, depending on the kind of investment that you have, you have to consider the long term and what you're going to be investing in. Some of the investments that we have now, they are not paying a lot of dividends, but the growth that you're going to have, oh, here I am like on your face. <laughs> The growth that you're going to have is worth it. So that's why we always have in our financial mm -hmm. independence plan, you know, growth. Yeah. And was it, is it Warren Buffett? I yeah. think it was Warren Buffett that mm -hmm. said like time in the market beats timing the market. So yeah. the longer you can leave your money in there, don't let emotion play into mm -hmm. it. Do your research, pick sound stocks. And the longer you leave all of these investments to grow and compound, the more you're going to see the benefit down the road. So we've learned a lot in our past three years of DIY investing. I think more than we even could have dreamed yeah. at the beginning. We thought we were, we knew we didn't know very much or as much as we thought we knew when we started, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't think we really thought how it different nice. we would be three years down okay. the road. Yeah, basically when we started investing, like to summarize at the beginning of COVID, the market was up, you know, we, that's when we put more money and we saw the money going, mm -hmm. going, going, and then next year it went down, it yeah. crashed, and that's why the emotional uh, investing kind of comes into play because we lost money and we are transparent about our financial situation that hopefully we can inspire you by our learning opportunities and you don't make the same yeah. mistakes. Yeah, so <laughs> DIY investing is really great to help you yeah. shape your financial future. But if you take into account these five lessons that we've learned over the past three years, mm -hmm. educating yourself, right? Making informed decisions on your investments, setting clear goals for your financial future, diversifying your portfolio, um, stay disciplined with your investment plan, and think long-term. And I think if you stick wow. and follow these five lessons that we've learned, some of them the hard way, it'll make your DIY investing journey a little bit easier. Yes, and thanks for letting us be part of your journey today. We hope yeah. that you're well, we hope that you're safe, and we'll see you in our next video. Have a great week, guys. Bye.